People often ask, is it possible to have comfort off grid? We get it. We were worried about that too. Some simple things that people would associate with comfort is running water, energy, a toilet and sewage, internet, and the list might go on. Today, we're going to share our experience and you can decide for yourself if it's possible to live off grid comfortably. Today, I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on off-grid living and I'm going to be trying to answer the question can you live comfortably off-grid? I don't know if I chose the best day to come here to the property I still have a few things that I want to grab we're still not staying here full-time because we didn't prepare like I said before our wood stove and right now we're just staying with family close by but there are some things that I left in the property that I would like to get and since I didn't maintain the road from the beginning, there's like some icy spots that I'm scared of getting stuck and then having to pay a tow truck to come pull me out. So I prefer to just leave the truck over by the part of the road that is shoveled and come here with my tractor with the blower because I don't get stuck with the tractor as much as the truck is wider so I prefer using the tractor now to answer the question can you live comfortably off-grid it all comes down in my opinion to how much you have to invest in your off-grid property because obviously if you have a big chunky budget then anything is possible you can hire big crews to come and build your house in a few months and you can install the top of the line solar system where you don't have to worry about if you have enough energy or not. But I'm just going to guess that that's not everybody's situation. So you try to find a balance between, at least me, us, we try to find a balance between what we can afford and try to stay as comfortable as possible, right? And since we're striving to leave that free, it gets harder for us especially myself I'm an immigrant so it's not like I inherited land or anything obviously there's talented people that are able to make a lot of money unfortunately that's not me but hopefully who knows someday finally made it here to the property I'm out of shape I always say that that half kilometer walk there it really just kills me as I was saying I consider me and my family blessed to be able to have our our trailer to have our own land we have a tractor to help us build our home so I can't complain how we got here that's a different story maybe a story for another video because it's hard like if you're starting from scratch to turn enough money to buy a piece of land to buy equipment especially in today's economy worldwide not a lot of people have the privilege of owning their own land and uh, machinery to be able to do what we're doing here but it is possible there's some hard work that needs to be done to get to this point or even better we're not the perfect example by any means if we put some hard work into it everything is possible now when it comes to living comfortably it depends to your standards as well like what are you used to right my mom used to tell me before i got married when you marry someone make sure you're able to provide a better living situation than what she's accustomed to i wouldn't say i followed her counsel <laughs> very well because i mean look at us here we're in the middle of nowhere with no house but i'm fortunate enough to have found a wife that has the same thoughts or thinks similar to myself if you come from a humble or poor family then what comfortable means to you is different from a person that's coming from a, a more middle class upper middle class kind of living situation but it is possible to live comfortably off grid in my situation with the solar system that i have when it comes to like ac in the summers for example i'm able to run the ac in my trailer pretty much all summer long but there are days that I need to turn on a generator but if I had a bigger solar system maybe I wouldn't have to turn on the generator as much but even with bigger systems I still feel that uh, as far as solar is concerned it comes to a point where it's just not reliable enough 
and where a generator is a must-have in my opinion because it makes no sense to have a bunch of solar panels and batteries because after a while if you go through a whole week with no sun like they're not going to be any good to you so having a backup plan is essential so having a generator i feel like it's a must-have even if you have a big solar system but i just feel that going 100 percent on solar and stay comfortable like with ac and everything on uh, it's very hard so it's another day i'm currently not at my property i'm at a family's house right now but i just want to continue from where i left off last time so i spoke a little bit about the solar how i'm able to run the ac and uh, stay comfortable during the summers just so you can have an idea we paid around twenty thousand for our solar system. We waste more or less around, on average, I would say around 60 liters. Now put the gallons up here of gas to run the generator. That's because up north here, we get a lot of cloudy days. And also just keep in mind that I have 24 solar panels. I still didn't finish installing all of them. So I was running on 18 solar panels. Like the angle is not set properly yet. So I expect like, my efficiency for the solar panel is going to go up so I probably will waste less gas in the future this summer over here and we plan on putting out a video showing how I did the connections and how I set it up and also how I'm going to DIY my own solar panel stand just to try to save some money I spoke a lot about solar but also there are other factors as well like water, like sewage, like waste so I'm just gonna touch upon this a little bit. For example, when you're off grid, most of the times you're gonna have to provide your own water because most likely there's not gonna be any water around. So we did a video on uh, how we dug our own well. You can check it out over here. But when we first got to the property, we had to haul water. So it's not very practical. Like if you're talking about being comfortable, you're trying to live in a way where similar to how used to live back in the city right having running water is a huge comfort luxury i would say a lot of parts in the world don't have that luxury being able to have 24 hours water on demand that's part of making your life off grid more comfortable the right water pumps with a well you can have that comfort of having running water in your off-grid home also we did a video on how we do laundry so a lot of women are concerned on how are they going to do laundry if they're off-grid. So on that video we share how we just got some machines that are more energy efficient. So we're able to run it from our solar and also the dryer runs on propane and some electricity as well but not as much as those dryers that are 100% electrical that waste way more energy. So also you need to think about your sewage. So basically, when you go to the toilet and you flush it down, when you live in the city, you don't have to worry where that's going. But if you're off-grid, then uh, that's something you have to take into consideration. A lot of people off-grid, they use an outhouse, which is like a bathroom outside, which is a hole dug on the ground where they do their business. And then when it gets full, they fill it up back with dirt and they move it to a different location. But I wouldn't say that's very practical or comfortable it is a solution for a temporary there are people that choose to live with an outhouse and there's nothing wrong with that some people really enjoy being out in nature and uh, doing their business but sometimes there are a lot of mosquitoes and uh, but it is a bit inconvenient so my plan is to put in a septic system a septic system is basically your own sewage treatment so Basically, you install a tank underground that takes in all your wastewater. It then uh, uses bacteria to decompose everything. And then the, most of the water goes into a drain field, which is like pipes with holes that let out all the wastewater so that it dissipates the water into the ground. The ground works as a filter. So the water goes back into nature and, uh, and gets recycled. So if you have a big or a sized appropriately, septic system then you don't have to worry about your sewage right maybe every two to three years you pay uh, someone to come with a pump to clean out your septic system and that's all you have to worry about also another option is a composting toilet which you guys can research and find out more about it 
and also a lot of off-grid people go with that option and yeah that's another solution for sewage now when it comes to waste disposal where we live right now there's a place around 20 to 30 minutes away where we take our waste we can go there twice a week and just drop off all our waste and recycling there. In the city, you have the convenience of having the garbage people collect your trash. But at the end of the day, you end up paying for those services through your taxes, your property taxes. And us, where we live, our property tax is very low. So I can't complain about taking care of my own waste. A huge part of living comfortably off-grid is your house or your home. Making sure you have an, a well-insulated and sheltered from the water from the elements is huge when it comes to comfort off-grid. Currently we are staying in our RV, our travel trailer, as we build our house and in the summer it worked pretty well for us because we had the AC running so it is a bit tighter but we were comfortable and uh, I was mostly working outside. The kids stayed inside doing their homeschool and their chores and then they came outside and played. So the time we spend in there it's not really that much, but definitely having a bigger space is definitely a bonus. Now, in the winter time, we had quite a few issues with the condensation. We talk about it in, our, in this video here, about the issues of staying in the winter in our trailer. I didn't really want to install a wood stove in there just because the space is already so tight. I would need to isolate a big area for the wood stove, so I decided not to install a wood stove in there. A lot of people mentioned that having a diesel propane heater would reduce the humidity, which was the issue of staying there in the winter, and also the cost of running propane and these fuels, right? If you don't have a wood stove, then it can get pricey, especially on RVs that are not properly insulated to live in the winter time, right? So having a well-insulated home helps a lot in having a comfortable off-grid experience. Another thing living off-grid is usually you're more isolated or further away from like large centers, large cities. So obviously you have to plan your grocery trips accordingly. Like you want to try to buy what you're going to need for the week so you don't have to drive all the way there and back. Kind of helped us a lot because we used to like eating out all the time. So that has helped us to not go out as much because we know that it's gonna be like a one hour round trip just to go and eat something else and it's not worth it, right? When it comes to mail, that's also another thing that you need to maybe get a PO box because most likely you're not gonna have mail delivery to your door. Here in Ontario, everyone has the right to receive mail for free. So they give us a PO box for free. Another thing that makes off-grid living more enjoyable and comfortable is when you have good road access. For example, in our situation, we knew that we had to shovel part of the road and I didn't really do it for this year properly because we weren't staying there 100% of the time. But I definitely have some improvements to do on the road to make it more safer for the winter time so that it's easier to, to maintain the road during the winter months. And also even in the summer months, there's a lot of potholes. So I had to do some repairs in my car because of all the potholes. So I want to try fixing that piece of the road there to my property, like around 500 meters, just so we can uh, be more comfortable as well as we go in and out of our property. So having good road access also makes a huge difference in being comfortable off grid. So whenever you're looking for properties, Try to see if there's already a driveway. If not, then you're gonna have to make one. And everything costs money to have something well done properly, right? You can save some money by doing it yourself, but you still have to get the materials there. Either you have to haul it or you have to pay for a delivery and the machinery or equipment that you're gonna need to make the driveway or the road. So things to consider. Also in the times that we're living in, my wife works from home we need the internet, so having internet access is a huge part of being comfortable off-grid. Also, the kids sometimes are able to watch some programs, some educational material through the internet. So having access to internet helps us also be more comfortable off-grid. And we use Starlink for our internet, and so far it's been great. We get 
around uh, 50 megabytes per second for download speeds which is better than what we used to get before in our country home. So in conclusion you can definitely live comfortable off-grid if you have the resources for it. If you don't have the resources for it you can still make your life more comfortable but it's gonna take more work. What determined for us if we were gonna go off-grid or not it's more about the lifestyle. Comfort is good but that's not our top priority. So our top priority is to spend time with the people that we love, spend time with God, and spend time with our children, enjoy nature. And I just feel that uh, the life we were living in the city was very hard. We were always worried about paying the bills, about uh, work, work, work. And when we got home, we we're stressed. We don't have time to spend with our family or we don't have the patience to deal with our children. So just having that remote lifestyle where living debt free is the key. It's like trying not to owe any money. So we could try to borrow money to buy a bigger solar system or, or to build a house. But we decided to try to stay debt free. So. We're gonna build slowly as we have the funds. And we already have a comfortable life the way it is right now. We have running water, we have AC, we have heater. We have plenty of wood on our property, so it's basically free to heat. While well, it's gonna take work to harvest the wood, to store it, split it. But at the end of the day, we don't have to pay, we don't have to go work outside to make money, to buy gas or whatever we can just use our wood our dryer still uses propane but we try to reduce our costs as much as possible and at the same time try to live comfortably so to find a balance maybe my wife will disagree with me <laughs> she made sure that we renovated the trailer before we moved off grid because obviously she's spending more time there than me she doesn't want to look at those brown walls she doesn't like the color brown on the trailer so had to make sure to give it a paint job and a, a little facelift but it is nice to enjoy a, a nice renovated space and hopefully I can build a, a nice home for our family to enjoy and to be comfortable off-grid but do it in a responsible way where we're not getting into that that's what we do and that's what I counsel my friends to do as well try to stay that free and uh, and enjoy life, live life in the present. We can't live always thinking like, oh, when I retire, then I'm gonna enjoy life. So in the next coming videos, I'm gonna be sharing my ideas on trying to make life more comfortable off-grid. So make sure to stick around, make sure to like the video and subscribe. And stay tuned, my friends. There's a lot of projects coming up this year and I'm gonna do as much as I can. At the end of the day, it's a one-man show, so so I pray that God gives me strength and wisdom as I continue in this off-grid journey. Thanks for watching.